Hello everyone, welcome back to another What's for Dinner video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some meals that I fixed for my family this past week. I have a couple of new recipes to share with you that are super easy and delicious. So I hope this video can give you and your family some meal inspiration or maybe some new meal ideas to try. Let's get to cooking! This night for dinner, I fixed Parmesan crusted pork chops. In a small dish, I added six tablespoons of Italian breadcrumbs, one fourth of a teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of dried parsley flakes, half of a teaspoon of black pepper, and about two thirds of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And then I mix everything together until it was well combined. I then dip my pork chops in that mixture on each side until they were well coated. And then I placed the pork chops in a hot frying pan and I seared them for a few minutes on each side until they were a nice golden brown color. And then I just repeated that process for each pork chop. I had a total of nine pork chops. After I got all of my pork chops seared, I then placed them on a large sheet pan and then stuck them in the oven that I had preheated to 350 degrees and I baked them for about 10 minutes just until they reached an internal temperature of 145 degrees because you want to be careful and not over bake them or they will be tough. So you have to keep an eye on them and this is what they look like whenever they come out of the oven and i'll also fix some sister schubert dinner yeast rolls and some mashed potatoes to have as a side and this meal was delicious this night for dinner i fixed marry me chicken i had a total of six thinly sliced chicken breast and i just pat each one dry and then i seasoned each side of the chicken breast with some salt and pepper to taste After I seasoned my chicken breast on each side with some salt and pepper, I then dredged my chicken breast in some flour and I've just done that with each chicken breast. And I also had a skillet with a little bit of olive oil on my stove and I was letting that heat up while I was dredging my chicken in the flour. After I got all of my chicken breast coated in the flour, I then added two tablespoons of butter into my skillet with the olive oil. And once everything was heated up, I then added my chicken into my skillet and I cooked the chicken for a few minutes on each side just until it was cooked through and it was a nice golden brown color. Once my chicken was finished cooking, I then removed the chicken from the skillet and then I just repeated this process with my remaining chicken until all of it was cooked. And then once all of my chicken was finished cooking, I then started making my delicious creamy sauce. In the same skillet, I added in one and a half teaspoons of minced garlic, and then I just let that cook for a couple of minutes. I then poured in one cup of chicken stock. One cup of heavy whipping cream a half of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And then I just gave everything a good stir and let that simmer for a few minutes. I then added in a fourth of a teaspoon of ground oregano, a fourth of a teaspoon of ground thyme, and a sprinkle of some red pepper flakes. And I also added some salt and pepper to taste. And then a third of a cup of chopped sun-dried tomatoes. And once I got my sun-dried tomatoes added, I then just stirred all of those ingredients together. I then added my chicken into that delicious creamy sauce and I spooned the sauce over my chicken and I let that cook for just a few minutes just to let that sauce thicken up a little bit. And then it's ready to serve. This was my family's first time trying this recipe and it was delicious and it was very easy to make and that creamy sauce, so good. I don't think it was as good as the creamy Swiss chicken that I made last week because that's now my absolute favorite chicken recipe ever, but this one is definitely up there. 
I also fixed some green beans, some macaroni and cheese, and some Sister Schubert dinner yeast rolls to have as a side. Up next, we had Instant Pot Creamy Pasta and Beef. I started off by turning my Instant Pot to the saute setting, and then whenever the display said hot, I then added in just a little bit of olive oil and one diced up sweet onion, and then I just stirred that around and let that cook until my onion was soft. So far, this is one of my favorite Instant Pot recipes. It's delicious and it's easy to make. When my onion is soft, I then add in one pound of lean ground beef, and then I just chop that up and I let that cook until my ground beef is no longer pink. When my ground beef is finished cooking, I then hit the cancel button on my Instant Pot, and then I add in one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of Italian seasoning, and one teaspoon of garlic powder, and then I just give that a good stir. I then pour a 16 ounce box of medium shell pasta over top of my meat. I then pour a 24 ounce jar of marinara sauce on top of my pasta. And then whenever I empty all of that from the jar, I then fill my jar up with water. And then I pour all of the water over top of my pasta as well. I then gently press my pasta down to make sure it's well covered in the liquid. I then place my lid on my Instant Pot and then I hit pressure cook and I let that cook anywhere between eight and nine minutes. When it's finished cooking, I then do a quick release. After all of the pressure is released, I then remove my lid from my Instant Pot and I pour in one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream and one cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. And then I just stir everything together until my cheese is melted. and then it's ready to serve. And here's my bowl of my creamy pasta and beef, and I added just a little bit more shredded Parmesan cheese on top of mine. Up next, we had chili in the crock pot. That morning, whenever we woke up, it was 30 degrees outside and snowing, so I wanted something that could warm us up, and I thought a nice bowl of chili sounded delicious. To fix my chili, it's super simple. I just brown one pound of lean ground beef and then I drain all of the grease off of it whenever it's cooked. And then I pour all of my meat into my crock pot. I then add in a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes and tomato juice, a 15.5 ounce can of light red kidney beans, a 15.5 ounce can of chili beans, one heaping teaspoon of minced garlic, and our favorite chili seasoning, a half of a cup of French's Chilio seasoning. After I get all of my ingredients added, I just stir everything together, and then I place my lid on my crock pot, and I let that cook on low for at least four hours. And here's my bowl of chili. I like to top my chili with a little bit of shredded mild cheddar cheese and a spoonful of sour cream. This was a perfect meal for a very cold day. That's it for today's video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.